Professor. Um, this is simply to welcome our uh, CPTM companion from Australia, uh, John Blackshaw, and one of the Good founding afternoon. networking member. And uh, um, just to say that um, I was so glad, uh, or we were so glad, or our team, to know about um, months ago that John will be in UK and he planned that uh, part of the kind of things he's doing in UK, about a week or so, or however much we need it, he would be dedicating to the CPTM Smart Partners yeah. Hub, and actually to the CPTM Smart Partners. So, uh, welcome therefore to the CPTM Smart Partners Hub on behalf of John and myself uh, and our Smart Partners Hub team. I just returned actually from uh, not yet finished the International Standards Organization um, <coughs> General Assembly, which um, uh, um, was uh, pre uh, um, uh, had a program before the uh, General Assembly in relation to developing countries, what is called DEFCO. I'm saying that because a number of smart partners didn't understand from our uh, interactions and our writing what is DEFCO ISO GA. So uh, the International Standards Organization uh, has an annual general assembly. They have uh, a lot of members, hundreds of members, uh, global, globally. Quite an, a number of them are from Commonwealth countries and they are therefore heavily involved or aware of CPTM for many years since CPTM started. And um, uh, they are most of them, with the exception of Australia and Canada and in the category of developing countries. So the developing countries, as Alan Bryden, our also CPTM companion and former most successful Secretary General of ISO explained to us the developing countries established an interaction, the ISO established an interaction for them before the General Assembly. And there are quite a number nowadays of developing countries members of the International Standard Organization or um, observers or yeah, so, majority of Bureau of Standards internationally from developing countries mm -hmm. are in one or another involved with international standard organizations. Organizations. So, uh, what uh, I will try to do today is first of all to thank John very much to be here for me to be able to have a point of reference of explaining what have we done this year in Geneva at the International Standard Organization uh, at the beginning of this week. And, uh, uh, but uh, before that is to try to see uh, from uh, John uh, to get a bit of an update on signals from Australia since last time you were part of the larger open house and uh, mm. annual general meeting mm. of CPTM. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, of, of course, spotting signals it became kind of one of the main uh, kind of, um, uh, not activity, but the main feature of Smart Partners since last year at the annual general meeting. And it paid off. And it came about the idea of spotting signals in real time for the future. It came about because of this uh, most dynamic, uh, which attracted adaptive flexibility, dynamic developments that are taking place not just in technology but in everything else, mm -hmm. um, uh, globally, nationally, but at a personal level. Individual level, one feels uh, effects of this more rapid than ever yeah. kind of uh, changes. So uh, 
within the SMAP partnership movement, the CPTM, I think what we, what was initiated last year at the annual general meeting of CPTM, um, spotting signals in real time yeah. for tomorrow through SMAP partners, um, in other words, spot, uh, identifying the pulse at any time is one of the most valuable things that uh, smart partners are finding it, yeah? And that guides the initiatives that are taking place, be them in digital landscape, but not only on any other mm. things. So, so um, uh, uh, John, uh, you came last year here, uh, sometime in November, yeah? The in, in UK, to our yeah, general yeah, meeting, yeah, CPTM, yeah. and uh, um, that was sometime in November. So there were a number of things that have been discussed about the trends that are taking mm. place. Um, uh, but uh, in Australia, for instance, Australia has been a pied -a terre so to speak, within Asia, yeah. the most dynamic yeah. one. Yeah. Not only nationally, elections and tribulations yeah. about and so on, but the uh, the development of um, applications or of uh, financial technology, for instance, yeah. is wherever you look since in the last few months, you see Australia being present, Australian yeah. banks, Australian experts, Australian Bureau of Standards, B leading. Yeah. Now, why do you think is that? Well, because we're great people. Ah, of course. Yes. <laughs> um, but if we put I, that aside. And, and there's a, um, a lot going on <laughs> throughout Australia because we have the six states. Each state's doing its own innovation, um, have a, their own innovation pathways. And the university is. How uh, many states, states well, are six in? States in Australia. Six states in Australia. Which uh, is the most active state? Well, right? they're all as active, but in different areas, really. Right. Um, and that they tend not to compete for mm -hmm. funds, federal funds, at universities. So, generally speaking, they they have their own um, um, focus on what they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know through. I come from New South Wales, which is the largest um, populated state mm -hmm. um, on the east coast, Sydney being the capital. But a lot of there's been a lot of work being done, and there is currently a lot of work being done on smart cities, mm -hmm. um, an integration of uh, infrastructure within a smart city environment. So that, and we were talking about this earlier about the ISO, uh, the integration of technologies into. Um, almost everything that's that's happening, and I was saying yesterday that uh, I've been working with a company now that um, manufactures light poles, but it's not just a light pole. It's a light pole that's designed to um, include lighting, but also um, emergency help points, um, telecommunication points, um, and there's an extension now where, where one can use a plug-in for charging Are these LED, cars. LED? LEDs are all in the, the lights light. now. M yeah. most, most lighting now is LED. You know there is a big problem about that, but that's a bracket and may, may talk a bit later. Well, L LEDs have taken over from the old incandescent lights and that was my background before the, before the last three years, basically. But this smart... When you say your background, is that business background or engineering business, background? Air, aircraft, electronics, and then into public service, and then out again. And now I'm consulting. The engineering side. Engineering, oh. my okay. engineering, uh, and, and so then public yeah. service. Where were yeah. you in public service? Sorry, just. Oh, uh, okay. I was uh, um, in the Victorian public service in, as a supervising inspector of factories, so uh -huh. assessing safety and mm -hmm. things. But now. Okay. I do still do safety, I still do environment, I still do quality uh -huh. management systems and mm -hmm. that, that framework. Mm -hmm. um, but, okay, so. but so so the client one one of the clients I have now is into this smart technology for cities. Mm -hmm. And that's the aspect of it that they're looking at. 
but Sydney is also undergoing change because there's a light rail network being uh -huh. put into the middle of Sydney, right through the centre of the Who is building CV. it? Um, the Japanese or No, no, Chinese so it's Australian companies. Australian, Australian so com companies. Trans yeah, uh, Transfield may be one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also <laughs> an integrated um, road system being built now, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is um, a toll tollways through the Mm -hmm. through um, different cities as well. So there's, there's a, an emphasis on um, making cities, cities becoming more efficient in moving people through and also freight through. Mm -hmm. um, so we haven't quite got to the railways yet, but the railways need to, need to be improved. But we do have new carriages. So there is, there is a, a, an emphasis on technology and, mm -hmm. um, and with that go the standards and the longevity of the infrastructure going forward. So, um, so we're going through a period of re renewal, but it's not just. And of course, also procurement, which will procurement is part of that, part and, of that. and each and city sustainable procurement. Yeah, well, or maybe. <laughs> well, <laughs> they're recycling many of the um, road surfaces into new road surfaces, and they're putting additional additives in to improve the length and the durability of these surfaces and to make the surfaces safer for transport. You're right. And, and, all, and all, already uh, in Western Australia, they're looking at... Um, I, I think they have actually done it with these, you know, driverless vehicles. Um, so they mm -hmm. are experimenting in WA on mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. dri driverless vehicles mm -hmm. um, ar around the campus, I think, around the yeah. university just to test the system out mm -hmm. to see whether it works well mm -hmm. before it's then rolled out further. Mm -hmm. But as I say, each company, each, each state has its own um, focus in mm -hmm. terms of this. And I know when we were here last time, or several times actually, we'd be, we were talking about um, graphene and yeah. the use of graphene. Yeah. Um, well, there is a, a company now which has been established in Australia, which is linked into Manchester University yeah. here. So they paid a fee to be involved in that um, development work. Right. And they have a joint venture now with Flinders University in Australia, 50-50 mm -hmm. partnership um, for the development of graphene products within Australia. So they're looking at Mm -hmm. at a world market and I've just set up a company here. Mm -hmm. So so the, the transition between university and use yeah, yeah, is yeah. happening in, in that mm -hmm. in that space, That's even right. though it's an early mm -hmm. an early mm -hmm. phased mm -hmm. space. Well we'll speak to Professor Luke Gyorgyo and probably to other people in the we'll try to ask a bit more yes. about yes. Uh, the Australian <coughs> venture they have. Yeah, it's um, yeah. well. As I say, what's the name the, of the company? It's called First Graphene. First Graphene. Yeah, so yeah. it's a private company that's yeah, yeah, yeah. been established, mm -hmm. and um, to me, it sends out the signals. It's linked in to the the right avenues of research, mm -hmm. and now it's just and commercial, and and is now commercialising it. And mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's made any profits yet, but uh, the, the money they've raised through a share placement as being used mm -hmm. to um, further its endeavours in terms of mar cre creating a market for its products mm -hmm. and assisting companies that want to mm -hmm. move into that space as well because that technology But of course, there. just uh, to say that um, graphene, since we have been again a uh, number of years in ago, early bringing stage. early stages, the uh, early signals yeah. of it. Um, China is probably leading globally now on graphene or in a number of other things that we've been. Mm. So um, I think the Manchester has is keeping up with, but it's kind of an extraordinary challenge to keep up or follow uh, well, the China market. So I don't know about well, Australia. I think, they're, well, I think, they're, I think they're creating new. It's interesting because I was talking to a, a chap in Norwich earlier in the, well, late last week, um, who had a push bike 
and he mentioned that graphene was now built into the tyres yeah. of his racing bike. So yeah. it's it's being used in a, a way that the that initial uh, researchers about. may not think about because it's it has it's increased the wearability of the mm -hmm. of that particular tyre. So um, yeah, the uses are still being worked through. I think and it will be coming forward. And, and are you in any way involved besides probably at a personal level with the first graphene? I mean, they may need well, <laughs> well, I went to their AGM. Okay. I have some shares. Ah, I bought some, okay, yeah, you know, I'm sort of, yeah. but I'm not heavily um, yeah. involved in it, but I, I like what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. And I might buy some more mm -hmm. further further down the track. No, because I, well, the only reason why I said it is because if there are good signs, um, when in earlier stages, earlier years, uh, we were discussing in Manchester and then continually being in touch on graphing developments and application, we did bring up the issue of standards. Yes, and there was. Still early, st still early stages. And it may now, if there are commercial applications, most likely. Uh, well, I, I think I think it's still in the early stages. Uh, the, no, um, <laughs> the um, I mean, the company mm -hmm. currently is a, able to back to nanotechnology, is because you need a uniform um, micro um, grain size for different applications. Yeah. And uh, first graphene has achieved that for five micro and ten and fifteen, as I understand right. it. So that so they are able to um, reproduce those um, standards, mm -hmm. which is their own standard. Basically, there's no external standard for growing granular size, which can then be used in different Will applications. Will you say their own standards, John? Because well, here it is actually standards in real life. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, they're setting their also. own standard because there's nothing to follow. Their own within the company? Within the company. So the uh, Standards Australia, our friends, yeah. the Bureau of Standards. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, what, okay. what, I mean... Well, they're not involved as far as They're I not involved, no. isn't they? It's a company standard, which would pre. May. Well, it may come eventually, but um, granular size might be important for a per certain product, and mm -hmm. therefore the granular size may be mm -hmm. important from a, a developmental point of view in, in developing a particular product and sustaining that through through its manufacturing cycle. And there may be a, a need for a standard to manage that. Uh -huh. um, but the input, and we are talking about this earlier, sort of Correct. inputs into it may be that the granular size needs to be verified <coughs> by some external laboratory mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the moment the company is doing its own thing. They're not NADA accredited, which is the bureau which, are, um, mm -hmm. which in fact um, mm -hmm. accredits laboratories under uh -huh. 17025, so they're not and I mm -hmm. deliberately asked them that question mm -hmm. at the AGM. Mm -hmm. But, they, but they, they have the technical expertise to, to determine and to maintain the granular size for the marketplace within those three uh, And probably they sizes. are connected in that sense or resonate well, with the UK partner here. Well, they have this, just established a company here okay. and they're just going to launch on the, uh, on the um, FT uh, index. The, uh -huh. um, but apparently, there's a second board that they're going to. There's a second board rather than the first board. Uh -huh. um, but that's only happened in the last. I read over the last week. Um, okay. So um, the company was formed a couple of months ago, but they've just obviously moved in, and they have a, a manager here who so they've appointed. So, would they, if they are establishing the company here? Which is one reason is for the uh, the links uh, with Manchester University. Manchester University, probably yeah. the standards. I'm trying to no, trace. no, no. There are no standards in this field. The, the, the universities are so setting the company. Uh -huh. the, the, well, it's, it's like when I, when I worked in the aircraft industry in uh -huh. the fifties and sixties, there were no Australian standards or British standards which dealt with the things that we were were dealing with. So the company. Um, had to do their own. Had to do their own, set their own standards so that there's this reproduce mm -hmm. uh, um, cycle that, that one could maintain. Mm 
mm. and the MOD here yeah. approved or not approved the standards. So the MOD, in fact, was setting the standards for its um, what was the uh, procurement yeah. in terms yeah, of technology um, going into what went into the, to an aircraft system. So they they were setting the standards, but there there wasn't really a British standards that was involved in mm -hmm. that at that time for mm -hmm. the type of work that we were doing because it was all mm -hmm. um, experimental and mm -hmm. uh, preliminary. Mm -hmm. And where I worked before, we we would do the prototype development, mm -hmm. do a pre-production run, and then it would be uh, let out to tender. So we were in the pre-production phase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the standards were being set by the organisation and by MOD at that time. So this is similar to yeah, what's yeah, happening yeah. with the graphene now that the company yeah. is setting its own standard. Yeah. Um, it's the customers that will be doing their own verifications of that before they put it in their product. Mm. And uh, like uh, may, maybe yeah. down the track they might decide that they'll, they, they'll get big enough to have their own laboratory and they may well um, decide to get NATA into a credit that, the, mm -hmm. the laboratory and the repeat, repeatability of the testing, but that that will come. But it's a new company, and so uh, well, what what uh, these are built-in signals, real time. That's what we're talking about. Is what is coming out of this discussion also, is that the new technology developments that are taking place, they are also. Uh, if you m move on into this, you don't expect necessarily standards to exist. Well, you have to, most more of the likely time they, that don't. they don't exist. That's right. So that's exactly right. Uh, the idea of uh, uh, pushing for startups or whatever, one needs to be aware that there are no standards for whatever because you are a startup for something new. Exactly. So you exactly. need to have the capability to do your own standard. You can't rely on ISO or your National Bureau of Standards. Well, well, exactly. Particularly the engineering. Yeah. The but but if you're a fo if you're a follower, um, then a standards may shortcut your development time going forward. So if mm -hmm. the tech once the technology is proven, mm -hmm. and you're say in a, a developing country and you want to move into that technology, mm -hmm. well, the standard may well be sitting somewhere in ISO or somewhere in BSI, somewhere in Australian standards that will and they were used to leapfrog that a lot of that development work That's and you'd be able to ap apply it quicker. So there is a need even at that level to be aware that of sources of new where of new new developments. New and developments the possibility, but also possibility of, of them existing and how do you kind of go about it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, we were we were talking the other day yeah. about the ISO nine thousand and one standard and we were saying that it did well, in my belief is that it doesn't apply to very small organisations. It's only when you get bigger yeah. that you have to control staff and uh, you, you have inputs coming in, management. which okay. is quality management standard. Um, so that there's this repeatability re through the production process and improve, making improvements through the production process, whether it's paper or whether it's mm -hmm. manufactured goods or... Or whatever, but, um, the, the but as soon as you get beyond a certain size, it has a benefit. Yeah. Below that, it's a bit of a hindrance. Mm. So another kind of spotted signal that <laughs> into what we were talking yeah. about in this real situation is that um, if um, uh, these um, uh, business models are emerging they are rolling type. They are not conventional business models that some of these companies are following, simply due to probably the nature of yeah. the digital landscape that they are working in. Yes, or the, or the, yes. um, the brain Or landscape. the creativity they yeah, have, yeah, or exactly. the opportunities they found and they want to get. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. then, um, the, the, the question was, uh, um, how can, what sort of standards, both in relation to management, because you don't know, is a kind of chaotic, adaptive it type is, of management. It is. 
and and it it will be. And there's more and more. When, when, it will when, be naturally. Yes, uh, yeah. uh, mo mo most companies are very small now. You might yeah. find four or five people having a, a great idea and uh, selling the idea to somebody. Um, and then when, once somebody buys that idea and they can use it in their own um, for their own reasons in their own businesses, um, then the idea itself is transferred in. Uh, but the repeatability of it within the organisation might be picked up by ISO 9001. But some of this, of uh, I mean, oh, oh, obviously some of this, uh, uh, I mean, um, the, any text at the moment that you read, sooner or later, you see disruption or disruptive and all the rest of it, um, is actually almost pointless to even say then that, look, there are emerging new patterns of which you don't know, but you have to go with yes. while you adapt yeah. and flexible and yeah. have some risks. Yeah, risk is that, always there. That you are, yeah. But um, uh, could one talk about, <laughs> just for the sake of uh, trendy bit, talk about a disruptive standard or a standard for disruption or however we're talking about because these are things to do with I, 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 I don't think I don't think so. Well, personally. I don't think so too. I, but yeah, because you never producing know, some a, language will come up. Producing so a standard is, is, is it requires collaboration between different groups and within ISO uh, between international different groups who are really looking at a consensus to come up with an outcome that would be useful within their own jurisdictions um, to control chaos in mm -hmm. the sense. So it's the other, it's the other end of what you're talking about disruption. That, that what standards are trying to do is to bring some consistency in application, That's it. whether it's a technology or whether it's a management system, uh, an environmental system. Um, they're all trying to control a an environment that that is in chaos, and that's what we've been trying to do since we came mm -hmm. out of a, a cave, um, mm -hmm. and we and we we see the manifestation of it all around us. That that we we do like um, um, being in an environment which is safe and protective, rather than being in the chaotic state. And whatever we do, we're trying to uh, make it more and more um, reflective of our conservative view of life rather than a, a disruptive view of life and that's why wars are so disruptive that they destroy everything so mm -hmm. having a standard to cause chaos I can't see that no, we, we, we know just, we know what the answer is don't you, you so, just so drop, either you drop a few bombs on a place legitimize disruption you know well, or institutionalize I, disruption because well we I, have in our war machines I have a problem okay. with uh, all the time uh, people throwing into their language disruption like you know is uh, because really disruption is not new no but uh, it is more visible the uh, digital landscape uh, effects which are more not only visible but more frequent so yes. frequent yeah. that you think that at any point of time there is something going on which will disrupt but no but 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 the idea is that the 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 developments appear only in tone with the other developments otherwise they wouldn't be there yeah so i'm not very sure exactly if it's a disruption or is an add on and built on like well, a spiral well, or it's, it's a, a it's, fractal. To me, it's a um, the disruption is only for the group that's affected by it. I suppose. But, but, but the wider community gets gains a benefit from it, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and I think um, yeah. we're talking blockchain before. Blockchain yeah, may be a disruptor for some yeah. people, but not for all people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. AI might be a disruption for pe certain people in a. In the, in the in the in, in the rail network, say, 
but it's not mm -hmm. disruptive for somebody who's working in a, a totally different area. So um, it depends on what's happening, where it's happening. But the thing that I have noticed is that as an individual, you have to be adaptive now. Mm -hmm. um, people more are, than before. Yeah, people are not working in careers for that length of time anymore. Mm -hmm. It's And they're not working in big groups anymore. I'm, the company I used to work for had 45,000 people at one stage, and now it's no longer existing. So all those oh. people have gone elsewhere. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but small collaborative groups of people are finding that they can make a living and they can create something new, whether it's in an art space or whether it's in a technology space. Um, they're, mm -hmm. they're collaborating on things that they... Mm. Um, feel of value to them as an income producers, but also a value that they're able to sell elsewhere. But I think, uh, it just, just to finish off with the, because the discussion around the standards and signals yeah. around technology like graphene and everything else, by the way of the very yeah. real example you're involved in, um, the, the um, uh, one could say, isn't it that the standard process itself could benefit of an application of blockchain technology? Because if it is about, that's another trendy bit. If blockchain technology is about trust and consensus and all that yeah. stuff, yeah. and we say standard is about that and it takes so long and it takes, you know, yeah. to agree, could do you think standardization itself, st producing the standard, benefit from not only production of, but maintaining from an application of blockchain technology which... In its distribution sense, it, uh, Distributed ledger, t yes, yes. Probably, but in terms of um, creation, uh, it requires brain power from multiple people. Um, in different well, that jurisdictions. probably may go some other time into AI and machine learning, but let's let's leave it. Well, to um, <laughs> what, whatever a machine creates may not be versed for humans. So, in a in a sense, yeah, but but it's not about machines creating. It's about you know that there are segments of those processes that could be robotized, automated which probably help the entire yeah. process, which may not be all of it AI. I mean, yeah. so the human is like all this accounting and so on, where you have this uh, uh, zero, yeah? Or you have robotic answers, yeah. yeah? So the question is, how do you build in those segments of information into a management flow which is otherwise supervised and conducted by humans. Well, so, because it's uh, that's the yeah. I, I suppose standards for that might need to come. Well, I, I I don't know. Standards don't meet every, all the criteria for being yeah. a human being or a human activity. I, I think it's there to to help in the re, re, repeatability of mm -hmm. the process or of the technology that's being viewed, um, or the 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 yardsticks against which something else is measured as being acceptable or not acceptable. In terms of using technology to short circuit some of that, that may be the case, but mm -hmm. but essentially it needs um, human agreement um, for a standard to be confirmed. Um, it may be the process of, of confirming a standard within the Bureau of Standards or ISO um, can, be, can be can be used to clean clean, clean up the algorithm. Yeah, can clean up the speed of the standard getting into um, an issued standard. Um, but once and it does take quite a length of time to get agreement from different parties around the world who have all different political and non political agendas this to bring actually, these into this, the this is to, to bring into the a particular standard. But um, once that's all been formalised, then, then the time taken to, to bring that to market and for people to, to know that it's there is 
is one of the short circuit things that one might be able to use blockchain for, but it would need, no doubt, a lot of investigation before they committed to, to so doing that. So when you read uh, newspapers every morning, which you probably do, I do. Which one do you do? I buy the Financial Review. Financial Time. Review in financial Australia. Financial Review in Australia. Yeah. yeah. Well, purely because I've just moved into that space, so I'm, uh -huh. until. Months ago, I was, I was reading other newspapers. Other but how often is that you see every day on every other page, crypto or blockchain? Not, not very much. Not is that very so? much. It's more to do with You're general business. You're a very civilized country. Well, yeah, it's just no, it's just general business news. You, you do see it. Um, but I, I, th I think the um, financial press has uh, gauged what its readership is looking for. So basically, it's a company news in general. Um, there is a what company. What about the banks? The, well, the, you, you see the occasional article, which is yeah. one I sent you. So what I, about the department? Yes, you did I, send I, us I, the I, I, I scanned Westpac. It. Westpac. He's the well, chairman of Westpac, the, the, the chairman of the uh, current. Australian-led technical committee, 307, okay. for, blockchain, for blockchain, is the chairman okay. of Westpac okay. until well, next year. Well, there is a company that's specialising in blockchain in Australia, which I do have another investment in. You do? But it's not, but it's not um, going very well oh, uh, wow. because of the, ac the applications really have to be worked through. Block yeah. Blockchain itself is not yeah. is is a co just co a series of codes. Yeah. It's the applications of the codes and the verification of the yeah. transactions through mm -hmm. through these nodes. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, in terms of profitability of using blockchain, is 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 either in the transmission of one item to another item. It's a transaction. A, yes. A transaction or in the managing of the transaction mm -hmm. across the nodes. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't see it being profitable in, in any other... Well, that's me, pretty profitable For in any other area. Yeah. But, cer but certainly this company that I've... Of course, this is outside the financial sector. It's outside the banking, of the financial yeah, sector. Fine. sector. Not only banking, it's tr but... It's to do with trans transactions. Transactions, um, trade. Um, yeah, and because and there has been a, a consignment of nuts sent from Australia to another country using blockchain as a way of verifying the, the, the nuts the were, were the pure, nuts. Were pure yeah. be, when they left the, in the container mm -hmm. and when they arrived at the other end the container was still sealed, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. recipient received it and agreed that it was what they ordered and it was to the standard they ordered to and they released the money back to the What vendors. that means is what? That initially when they left from Australia yeah. Yeah. It was uh, registered. There was data in data of the transaction. My blockchain, the one that I receive. Yeah. And the blockchain that was is with or the company who sent me the nuts. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So by the time I come, it's coming here. I have the recorded. Yeah, which might take data. Uh, Four weeks, five weeks in shipping time. And, but this one is and it's shipped and it's almost. it's secured to the destination, and then when you see it, you do your own testing at the receiving end, and then you can release the money via a blockchain back to also. the back back to the mm -hmm. um, vendor, so that the financial transaction is completed when that money then passes back. And it's completed to the because you also check the actual product. As well, that that's right. One. It's it's arrived, and, and there, there is a company that's done it with wine. They've done something similar with wine. Alan Braden it, would like to hear wine, that. wine to China because there's been some adulteration of mm. wine in China. Mm -hmm. So there's been a company that's done used used it to transfer a can of, container of wine to its merchant in China, so that they know that it hasn't been tampered with and the labels haven't been changed. And it hasn't got sort of, I won't say, it may have but, Chinese wine in it, yeah. but not the wine that was originally mm -hmm. intended to be sent. So, so, and that transactions has, has occurred between 
a company and its agent in China, in China. so that it's it's known as a quali the qualitative transfer. So that they, okay. they know what the wine was, they know when it when it arrives, they do their checks, they check the seal, and it's arrived, so that takes and then us they release very, the money across. Yeah. So I mean, that takes us immediately also to why is was so much Australian Bureau of Standards Australian yeah, yeah, yeah. interested to lead and then we are glad well we're an exporting nation the blockchain technology standards yeah well but well I think because because everybody would benefit from it if it will be possible to come up with yeah, I, th I think that's why there's a lot of interest in it because ah, of the in a standard uh, for blockchain technology. Not necessarily a standard. Well, there may well be, it may said. be why they're on the committee. The Chinese want to be involved on the committee, and yeah. it's all politics. But in terms of <laughs> in, in terms of governing a trans the transactions, I think it's it's um, it's proved that it works, yeah. particularly with the money going to the World Bank. Yes. Um, so there's... It's, what do you mean they go to World Bank? Well, the, the CBA transferring the $40 million to the World Bank as a donation, which I sent an article through. Ah, to, okay, 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 okay. Yes, the so, uh, Yeah, so it was just a test bank. to see whether that money was able to be transferred in that way and it was accepted by the World Bank and they agreed no, before but, the transfer. But, but you, know, you see, you, we, we are doing exactly what we wanted to do without having planned for it. Uh, the World Bank launched a bond in okay. August okay. and their main or oh, whatever function yeah, was CB, the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. in Australia. Yeah. So it may be that what you're talking about is... Yeah, it's a bond I. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, but it's about using uh, blockchain. That's right. That's right. Is that them. what we're talking about? Yes, yes. So the transfer went from CBA, which is a bank in Australia, directly to the World Bank using blockchain. Uh, without, well, I'm assuming it didn't go through our central bank. It went direct. Yeah. But it may well be that the central but bank no. has been involved in. I don't, I don't know that part of it. So what did that have to do with the China? Well, China is, is very keen to be involved in the blockchain committee that's being set up by Yes, your, of course, and they are so, involved. So, yeah. they're, so that they they're very keen to be part of the political solution once, a, if a blockchain standard is developed, they because they're a major trading nation, they presumably have an interest in making sure that what is occurring and how it's occurring is in fact meeting their criteria. What did As, you say is a developing nation? China? Well, it's not anymore, is it? But China? China. <laughs> well, I say, I, well, it's just a slip, isn't it? Is a developing it's tiger? A, well, it is. Or developing but the Americans, will, the Americans will yeah. be part of, no, the, of, I mean, of yeah. that relationship, okay. and Britain will be part of that relationship as well. So if there is a blockchain standard, yeah. uh, whatever shape it comes out as, mm. it would be quite interesting to see. Mm. But the code itself is universal. So, yes, of course. Of so course. It's not, yeah. I mean, yeah. IT yeah. is a, is a, an area that I'm not. Um, I don't know much about. Really, it's a black art. Yeah, I call it, it black art, it like was. accounting. Yeah. It's black art to me. Mm -hmm. um, but mm. um, okay, I mean, so 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 let's let's kind of uh, 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 put now a kind of perspective of what we're talking about. So the idea was to try to see if we can identify real time or spot signals right. which are integrated and dependent on one another so it's not just one signal blockchain it doesn't mean anything yeah they are connected so you gave the example for instance of this company uh, graphene company there yeah. are other things yeah yeah but um, and um, uh, both in terms of the uh, new business models in sort of quality management standards in terms yes. of is there a standard or not or do you need to develop your own, yes. don't rely yes. on others. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and how is or is not the Australian Bureau of Standards involved into it or does it have to be or in the meantime is there an exploring Well, it's, it's not yeah. at the moment. It's not. No. So, um, 
I mean, these are these are kind of uh, uh, real time situations that if you don't, um, if we do not talk about it, then everything else that we bring in, even if it is in an international standard organization, and so organization, they become rituals that people go through, like even our annual general meetings or whatever it is, there are rituals, mandatory things that yeah, one yeah. needs to talk about. Yeah. And they lose track of the real-time uh, natural kind yeah. of yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, a situation for which all those uh, things yeah. Yeah. might exist. Yeah. And this is, this is, uh, that's the reason why these spotting signals in real-time for the future, they are integrated, and uh, they are natural. They have a natural kind of uh, dynamic. They do before they be become captured. Captured because they they are, they are before, captured. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of work being done in universities that mm -hmm. are original work being done and repeatability work that's being done, but it would all be in relation to. Uh, the standards that that institution is setting for itself. It's only when it moves out into the marketplace mm. that, and it needs to be reproduced um, continually mm -hmm. in a profit, profit mm -hmm. motive environment, mm -hmm. that, um, that that consistency of approach may, may need to be documented in some way mm -hmm. to make sure mm -hmm. that what people, uh, what customers are, are wanting yeah. Um, is is given to them in the mm -hmm. way that it's intended. Mm -hmm. So um, okay. Well, uh, the the uh, 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 the 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 issue of sustainability is always brought in, and um, I'll mention now because uh, before I give a little bit of. Uh, Story, not story, uh, update to you about the and to the smart partners about the our presence, the smart partners' presence in ISO. Okay. Yeah. Um, the <coughs> again, in addition to disruption and blockchain and crypto and things of that nature, um, the issue of sustainability is being mentioned without again necessarily knowing how to deal with it. Everybody yeah. probably knows about it or interprets it in whatever way, which is fine, which is a real thing. Yeah. But how is being dealt with? Again, from the UN SDGs are kind of um, at a level of aggregation, yeah, which gives a, an, an aggregated message that each of these SDGs need to evolve in this way or that way up to such time. But when you try to say, okay, this uh, first graphing, uh, they set up standards and they have an incentive for that. Yeah? What incentive would they have also unless it is business incentive, yeah. unless it is science, technology incentive, yeah. economics? for sustainability, Just yeah? because the, the sustainability at the level again of the real-time real business or organization is very easy. It looks like almost, if you're not doing a good business, you're not you don't sustainable, survive. You you're don't not survive. survive, so then you're not sustainable. Yeah. So when you are told at that aggregated level, are you doing your sustainability bit for SDGs, you're wondering, is there something different in the meaning yeah. of yeah. sustainability? Yeah? Yeah. Well, Besides the fact that it's all this kind of uh, recycling plastic bags and all the rest of it. Which and, is, uh, that, that which is, is just, as, just as important yeah, which in terms is, of yeah. the planet, so sustainability. But I, it just de it depends on the business, doesn't it? I mean, a lot it of does. businesses have do have a sustainability model where you can... You, it's you built have into a, their good business. Th that's right. And, yeah. um, good business, good engineering. Exactly, good. exactly. And public pressure being brought to bear and government incentives 
being brought to bear to make um, smokestacks cleaner, um, less landfill, mm -hmm. um, people um, being able to recycle products that they weren't able to recycle mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. um, universities working on different microbes to chew up different types of mm -hmm. uh, waste products that, that, that we're creating. Um, so it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a, it's not, so say so it's not here, it's, it's, it's here, but it's here, it's here, it's exactly. here, it's, it's, it's part of every of evo Evolution in our sense yeah. of, of development. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, it's quite difficult to have kind of translate um, global targets yeah. into a, I'm not saying micro level, into a real time. Well, that's the role of government, isn't it, to try and <coughs> if they trade. sign if they sign into in agreements trade. and then they, yes. they need to encourage or uh, but through it should start from the other way well, around. Well, I think it probably is there now because mm -hmm. the awareness is there is yeah. now. But government incentives, financial uh, carrot and stick approaches yeah. um, mm -hmm. force that within mm -hmm. the local population, don't they? And standards mm -hmm. um, show the way in certain instances mm -hmm. where. There, there may be a pollution problem that can be resolved through a standard which, if you apply in a particular type yeah. of plant, will help, help you set up a, a, a biogradable mm -hmm. plant or something. I, I, I mean, uh, I, what I wanted to tell you, just to start a briefing a bit yeah. about the, our presence to ISO. Yeah? So this year, um, again, in the last, uh, as it was in the last seven or eight years, by now, we, uh, we, not we as CPTM, as CPTM hub in London, but CPTM networks of networks, and specifically that network, part of a network, which is more preoccupied with quality and standards, and of course that means uh, the chief executives of or mm. director general, whatever they uh, function, they are named, of a Bureau of Standards from a number of countries. Now, uh, who uh, most of them are from developing countries. Uh, you know, when I say developing, it's slightly different from China, but every country has a developing smaller. level. Yeah, either smaller or... Yeah. yeah. But... Um, and, and most of them, because of our constituency, the way we were given, when we were given birth to this CPDM, they are from Commonwealth countries. So they are from Caribbean region, from West Asian Mediterranean, Malta, uh, Mauritius, Jordan, uh, is not in the Commonwealth, but they are part of it, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, from Africa, Southern, Eastern, Western Africa, and uh, uh, from Southeast Asia, Malaysia, and, yeah, and of course uh, the, the 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 Australian, the New Zealand, and in mm. med in European context, UK, of course uh, Canada, yeah. So the 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 situation in those countries, sit various situations of the kind you just mentioned about, must be. Uh, equally existing, yeah? There's nothing different. There will be somewhere, somehow, a situation of that type that you mm. mentioned. It may not be first, gra first graphene, but it will be other type of situation. Yeah, other which be, Yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, for that reason, the uh, quality and standards inclusion network had, from the beginning, when it was launched in Malaysia um, when the, the then chairman of the um, uh, Bureau of Standards in Malaysia, um, who was also who is also very much a CPTM private sector member and uh, is an engineer and so on, Tan Sri. Um, uh, anyway, um, he he was very keen to say, well, unless we discuss, we have this open house type, 
among senior people of Bureau of Standards and um, discuss about anecdotal situation we are in, we don't quite see what is uh, real applications. And also, I don't have a confidence that I may do the same. Mm. Uh, somebody else might have tried and might have failed, or otherwise. Yeah, yeah. So that was what it was all about. I, this is very different, because I was talking to you, Very di we were talking together, very different from saying, here is an organization, multilateral or whatever it is, that um, is going to deal with a number of countries and a number of individuals, institutions in those countries. Yeah. And uh, uh, overall, you're sharing experiences. But you see, to share experience of what is usually ref uh, referred to best practice, it means that you're already going at that more aggregated level mm. or diluted level. There is some wisdom there, but from the nitty-gritty of a real-time mm. situation. Yeah. So the difference between the CPTM SMAP partners networks, be it the Bureau of Standards or central banks or national statistics or any network that we have, network of networks in CPTM, is that we're dealing with a situation that you have to deal with. Most of the people very senior mm -hmm. in that context. And they say, this is what I'm dealing with. I have some investment in that. I don't know if that's the right thing what I'm doing now. By saying that, you give signals of real time, not s things which have been written about, mm. diluted for a generic value. Yeah. Yeah. So that is, that attracts also a question of why do people want to be part of this? And what is it that they achieve? Who is to pay them? Well, we had in interna at the International Standards Organization, yeah, on Monday, yeah, before the DEPCO annual meeting started on Monday afternoon, one of the uh, leading more active, because more active meaning not that the others are sleeping, but mm -hmm. had something really to deal with, uh, chief exec, one of them, the one from Jamaica, from the Caribbean, Julia, Julia Duet. A number of times lately, she came back uh, and asked questions about how to do this, how to do that. Jamaican Bureau of Standards is also part of this technical committee 307 for blockchain. So she had a lot of interest to find out how others may deal with uh, mm -hmm application of blockchain, going to the central bank, what do you tell them, and all that. So he said, well, we meet, in fact, Barbados, Antea, and E yeah. from Zimbabwe, and the other said we should meet. But the one who said, we must meet, and let me tell you something, what about four to five on Monday, was Julia from Jamaica, because he needed really to talk. Yeah. Yeah? So this is how it comes about. They were not called to a meeting because there was a, 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 a program and a project and some aid that had to be followed. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It was just because there is a kind of a real professional. Yeah. Wish and the spontaneity of the And the spontaneity is, is quite extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, of course, from here, the Smart Partners Hub our duty is to connect them at any time on what they want to do. Uh, we put together the brief in accordance to what they were discussing during the year in the context of other networks and the signals and developments that are mm. taking place. So we said, okay, let's meet. Is that the meeting room in that hotel which Julia was staying? The others were staying in the <coughs> different other hotels. 
So we saw that, look, if at least Julia will meet with me, that will be a great success for her because we'll talk it over for the whole one hour and we'll meet the others with a briefing uh, next day which will be shared with each and every of the right. 50 ca countries. Uh, in fact, what has happened was that uh, on the net, people found out, so they said, I'm coming. Where is it? Oh, it's there. Well, I'm not there, but I still come. So we found out that from about 2.30 or so, uh, various okay. members of the network, they appeared in that space, and it was not four to five, it was from about 2.30 up to about 6.20. Did yeah. we have an agenda? Did they have an agenda? Of course, we need not to justify to ourselves, but to have a generic agenda and purpose of what? Because otherwise, so we had an agenda. And, uh, but we didn't follow agenda in now somebody speaks about this, then you speak about, no. We covered much more than that agenda, yeah. but we covered that agenda too. And of course on the agenda was um, uh, the digital landscape and the brief, and in particular the 2018-2020 program, this integrated program, that somehow needs to take place at the level of countries, specificity mm. in their situations like yeah, we just talked yeah, about. Yeah. So they said, we said, they said that probably we are more than 10 countries of that type. So we see if the central banks in my country would come in, if uh, the national statistics. So we are trying now to, to knit the, yeah. the, 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 the program. And it's already started. But it started in a different way rather than a big bang yeah. saying here is the money, here is the same reports, every other. Mm -hmm. it's, it's again um, a kind of organic development yeah. Yeah? Yeah. within a collab. It's a, if it is a collaborative, really smart partnership type of network, yeah. that's what it is. So you take opportunities, yeah? Now, we were very, very glad as a group that besides, obviously, uh, Jamaica Bureau of Standards with the chairman, with the executive director, sorry, of Jamaica, who uh, was present there, uh, uh, Edin Goroje, the new president-elect of the International Standard Organization, who is uh, uh, very much associated in the last few years with the Kenyan Bureau of Standard, a leading private sector um, uh, in energy and many other sectors who uh, became quite involved with the CPTM type of framework mm -hmm. since about a year ago. So he joined us together with the chairman, the new chairman of the Kenyan Bureau of Standard, yeah? Um, then uh, Botswana Bureau of Standard, um, uh, um, of course, Barbados, one of the founders of the uh, uh, quality and standards in CPTM uh, uh, context, yeah, not only inclusion, but well before Malaysia, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. and, um, uh, and and a number of others. But um, also, we have the CPTM networking member who was, uh, until last year, the head of, uh, he was a strat strategy advisor for so many years, and very valuable, um, Daniele Gerundino of, of International Standard Organization. So he joined us. Um, and in fact, he was the one who said, okay, Mihaela, this, uh, but let me tell you, the sustainability and the climatic change and the financial flows and he was able for about almost one hour to, to, to give so many, to spot so many signals about the, 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 the uh, uh, 
great prospects of actually integrating sustainability in relation to clim climate change in very specific things, in water, in all sorts of specific things, yeah. in forests and so on. So, but what it was interesting that we were left with from him was the fact that one can positively direct financial flows yeah. to the countries. And when you say positively, there are direction of financial flows with help of blockchain technology or cryptos or whatever, which may not be necessarily positive, but so in that sense, positive, including to fit in some of the SDGs uh, requirements, but that wasn't the main purpose. So it's very, because usually most of the countries and the Bureau of Standards particular are saying they don't have the money and the capacity, uh, the mm -hmm. money for the building capacity and so on. So we are saying, look, actually probably there is finance. It's just that the flows of finance have to be directed, attracted and directed yeah. towards matching also signals that mm. are, yeah. So obviously the, most of the discussion was about blockchain and crypto, blockchain technology, mm -hmm. and not about blockchain technology, but the applications of it. Yeah which is what is all about into this 2018-2020 program. So, um, uh, uh, we, 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 we are, uh, uh, overall, we were very, very happy that um, there was a most lively discussion and most positive kind of forward to engage into this. Uh, yeah, the briefing that was done, for which uh, we're very grateful also to Alan Bryden um, for pushing us to continue to do a briefing for ISO on behalf of uh, Quality and Standards Network, CPTM Network, that he's part of. Um, the briefing, obviously, is... Um, is to be seen as kind of maintaining the pressure on and the attention to be given to raising the strategic role and implementing it of National Bureau of Standards, probably in the context mm -hmm. of this digital landscape evolving, but I, there is no Bureau of Standards that wouldn't want to have a more certain financial kind mm. of um, uh, backing. Mm. And that only goes with new areas, strategic areas that the country and beyond the country is it, emerging. Yeah. Yeah? So uh, there are... <clears throat> the idea was who will be Eve, uh, not Eve, Julia again, steered up Eve, saying who will be actually following the changes that we require in our, in the organization of Bureau of Standards and in raising the strategy, how, who and how. So the idea was that, you know, there are, them themselves as individuals and professionals, yeah? Together with maybe central bank governors or other professional of that time, who all of them will be uh, sooner or later requiring to change, uh, to make changes within the institutions that they are in, yeah? Mm -hmm. To adapt and to raise the yeah. profile of strategy. Yes, yeah, I, I see um, the Standards Bureau as being supportive of the national visions and implementations. The, this, this and, and, and in terms of the um, productive flows that the nation's aiming for in terms of setting up its own improvements. So, mm -hmm. um, to me, the bureaus are the link between uh, what could be happening on the ground and what policymakers at the higher level 
yeah. want to happen, and yeah. and they're in a unique place to Absolutely. to advertise their services and advertise what Once the bureaus have got. That, but you see, the question is, how do you do it? Well, yeah. And how do you um, communicate that beyond the conventional? Because conventionally, you get into program, you're locked into program, educated the trainers and the whatever and whatever. Yeah. That's are fine, but one needs to actually. One does need a disruption into well, all that. Well, you're saying to initiate, and I don't know whether that's the role of standards to initiate. Uh, I think the, the a change. Yeah, because I think that comes from policy. Um, but the policy needs to be aware and briefed oh, about of the benefits yeah, of yeah, doing yeah, something. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a two-way thing. And how to go about it. Yeah, yeah. So, but governments don't work in vacuums. They know what's going on in their own countries, and they they, they know what crops they're growing, and they know what. Um, their uh, conduits of transport are, mm -hmm. um, and what countries receiving their goods require, mm -hmm. and it's to me a lot of the work of the bureau is to really satisfy those requirements in terms of making sure that they can provide an education service to the to the people in the country, um, to to further the standards, improve the standards, provide those laboratory services. Mm -hmm that we spoke about at an earlier um, mm. venue, at, at one of the dialogues. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't see them setting policy. But I, I would no, think, no, no, not, not I think setting they would policy, be supporting but being part policy. of. But, yeah, that's, all right, that's right. Policy, because yeah, the, they are operatives, strategic yes, ex operatives. Exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah they should uh, be like there. the central bank, they are strategic operatives. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, national statistics, I mean, you... Yeah, cannot set yeah, policies. Yeah, yeah. And as national statistics, you're not making a policy. As central bank, you're not making a policy. No, you're reflecting. But you're kind of, uh, yeah, reflecting, I suppose. Mm, yeah. Mm. So, so that was a very invigorating, actually, um, sort of interface. And uh, it just brought evidence to the fact that the... Um, the uh, uh, cooperative, smart partnership cooperative framework is the way to go about it. Now, as we said, there are many, uh, and I'm li literally using you here, I have to declare that. There's so many times, in addition to disruption and blockchain and crypto, so many times is cooperative and networks used, or collaborative networks. Now. You know that collaborative, we know from smart partnership, that's how does the whole mm. raison d'etre of this smart partnership. Exactly. Yeah. That everything goes to individual. And if the individual once has an incentive and is in charge of wishing to do something, then and meets you, who also want to do something in your own context, and you are cooperating together, then things will happen. Yeah. It may be that for after that happened, for a while, you're observing or you're helping others. That doesn't mean you're sleeping or you're not doing things. But you don't need to be part of it simply because you need to sign that you're part of it. Yeah? Right. So there is this different dynamics um, to make a, a smart partnership and a cooperative network as different from um, grafting huh? this word co collaborative and network to something which is if somebody is paying and has some particular reasons why it does it maybe very good reasons yeah yeah and is paying you and me, like he's painting a painter. I want you to paint me, right? right? Yeah. It's a different thing if I am painting by looking at you without being told that somebody is paying it's me to paint. paint you, because mm -hmm. then I am thinking twice, should I paint nice? Or mm. I don't get into the mood of painting in a way, mm. yeah? Yeah. I may be a bad painter, but whatever it is. Yeah. So, so this, this kind of 
real uh, uh, non-intermediaries. Yeah, you can't call a project a cooperative network of individuals. Yeah, it's called something different, whatever that is. But innovation doesn't happen in that way. You can have a uh, an aid project called innovation. Yeah. Well, I'm not very sure exactly, really. What do you do about being paid uh, with a particular terms of reference to innovate? I mean, you can s regurgitate what might mean innovation or whatever it is. Everything is mm -hmm. useful, but there is that distinction that needs to be made between the um, dynamics and objectives and way of doing things in a real time, real life, real world, cooperative networks as different from aid programs, for instance, mm -hmm. yeah? Or intermediary could be uh, a big foundation or, yeah. you know, giving or uh, an NGO being given some yeah. money to be implemented things. It's quite different. Yeah, it's it's um, the, the first type is sort of organic in a sense, yeah. as opposed to the other being uh, suggested and prodded and financed and mm. yeah, so something yeah. coming up from the grassroots and organic has a has, um, it, has, has a its own code, of, its well, own life, its own it does, yeah, self yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, regulating yeah. itself. But some people like that, but there are other people who like to follow the other. So. They like to be told what to do, to exactly. be part of something and so on. But that is not really collaborative thing. No, no. Because you are driven by some... Yes. Yeah. 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 So, um, so, so that, that was also a demonstration at the ISO Monday afternoon of what it means a real cooperative, collaborative among key professionals of very responsible, some of the most well-known in developing countries, mm. uh, Bureau of Standards. So um, um, they were uh, very useful documents and programs uh, as usual and we were very, very grateful to be part of at least one day of the DEPCO, Developing Countries meeting, the plenary session and the afternoon um, uh, breakout, uh, and together with um, a number of the our uh, members there, Eve from Zimbabwe, SAS, and also president of ARSO, uh, we chose to go to sustainable procurement, about which I already mentioned, but you elaborated in real life about what that may mean. Um, a very, very good uh, Swedish presentation. And uh, I, uh, again, uh, we met on the corridors uh, a number of the new members, who uh, new members, new chief executives or members of staff from Mauritius Bureau of Standard, from Sri Lanka, uh, from... Uh, um, uh, um, uh, quite, quite a number of new new uh, 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 bureau of standards who uh, whom we, uh, we 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 just got acquainted. They wanted to know about us, wanted to know about them, and this you meet uh, yeah, also on the yeah. background. Yeah. And of course, we also met some um, um, people who were. Um, Part of I was looking at this ah, this list that uh, the registered members yeah. and uh, uh, obviously I, I I I should mention among many others it was very good to see um, uh, uh, our UNIDO CPTM networking member um, who is head of um, uh, was head of delegation of UNIDO. TII transfer, uh, and is director of that section, 
Casa di la Sarmiento, Bernardo. And uh, um, he's uh, following most of the weekly um, uh, uh, communication and interaction oh, right. we have, okay. like this one. I'm sure okay. he will follow it. And uh, it was very, very good to have an interaction between the two of us about strategic global uh, initiatives that he's in charge of in UNIDO, that we want to be in charge, and it looked that signals could be shared. Okay. Yeah. Good. So I suppose I uh, just, for me, the last bit is just to prove that I have been there. That was my registration. Okay. And I owe, uh, and we owe, uh, CPTM, as usual, to be observer of um, British Standard Institute. Of course, we are in Britain, I'm British, but that's not the reason why BSI, uh, for a number of years by now, allow us to be observers. It's simply because we are working on similar uh, yeah. things, and it's very useful yeah. uh, to have their uh, professionals intervening during the year in various or, uh, activities that we have. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much to Scott Stedman and of course to David Bell and everybody else in the BSI. But above all, I think thank you very much to you. We kept thank you too. without having a lunch. Yes. That's not a typical a second day. Well, that's good for mine. Uh, well, I, I know. Probably we'll go now for... Uh, <laughs> no, no, uh, I've got to go, actually. Uh, are you sure? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, no, we may I'm have fine. something half an hour. No, no, I have a um, later evening appointment. Okay. Okay. Else, yeah. okay. So... Uh, that's not our, uh, at least you could have had some, or we bought some mm. uh, autumn fruits. They, for they are real, by the way. They, they they are those real. are real and standards and all the rest of it. I I'm won't sure eat one day. Yeah. yeah. But thank you very much, and hopefully the You're AGM welcome. this year yes. will take place, and who knows what other signals and developments we will do, but this is organic, natural evolution of uh, our limitless opportunities. Exactly. Uh, uh, the story so far. But, exactly. Uh, exactly. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. And I won't me. give you a pin because you already have it. Yeah, I have a but pin. But we may have a new pin if we want later on. Thank you.